Hey, okay, so I'm here in the United Lounge at LaGuardia Airport on my way back to Chicago after being here in New York City for a couple of days to do the Facebook Live event with CEO Andy Dunn of Bonobos. While it was happening, of course, as is the nature of Facebook Live, Instagram Live, folks can add in their comments. Now, I have a personal rule, and it is never read the comments. When I have the opportunity to read articles about myself or even about other trans or gay athletes, I try not to read the comments. I think it is the key to being happy in life <laughs> is to avoid other people's opinions uh, when they don't matter. And in many cases, when my story is being publicly put out there in a way that is vulnerable for me and um, you know, on a larger platform, such as Nike, uh, the Nike commercial, or with Bonobos, with this uh, reach that they have, I know that there will be some resistance. And, you know, I know I've known this as part of my experience since I came out in 2010, that every article that's written about me, there will be some hater. And that's just the nature of people not understanding what it means to be transgender, not knowing transgender people, and not really wanting to learn about my identity or who I am as a person. Now, in this particular case, the comments happen live and go up the feed. And so I didn't see them because I was on the stage talking, but in the aftermath of wanting to pull out key moments, what I found was that there were some folks who were really upset that Bonobos was having a conversation with me, that I'm featured as their February role model in their catalog, and that they are so genuinely um, supportive of me and my identity. Now, I know this is going to happen. Now, anytime that a company or a brand associates themselves with me or with someone in the LGBTQ community, there's a risk of pushback. And there's a risk of people, sad as it is, taking their business elsewhere and leaving, um, leaving business because of their association with me. Now, like I said, this is to be expected. I, I witnessed and experienced this firsthand when my Nike commercial came out in 2016. There were groups of people online who said, I'm, I'm never buying Nikes again. I'm, I'm never, you know, I used to like your company and now I don't. Uh, people say that it's a political issue, that they're shoving a political issue down their throats, and that they'll take their business elsewhere. That was pretty much the commentary that, that of the negative comments that were happening on the Facebook Live last night, um, or when you're watching this earlier this week. Um, and it's really disappointing. Uh, well, even though it's expected, it's really disappointing. What is exciting about this situation, though, is how strongly the people that I'm working with feel about supporting me and doing the right thing. Now, I'm a big Gary Vaynerchuk fan, a big Gary V fan, and one of the things that he says that really rings true for me is doing the right thing is always the right thing. Doing the right thing is always the right thing. So while something might not be of popular opinion, if it's the right thing, it's always the right thing. And Society and the world will catch up at some point, but it's better to always do the right thing. And for me, I think that practicing inclusion and respect is the right thing. Being inclusive, being respectful, being kind to one another is always the right thing. And so what I'm most impressed with is that, and maybe I, maybe I shouldn't be so impressed with it, but at this point in time, I, I do think it's impressive that companies feel so strongly about diversity and inclusion, about elevating my story, and about giving me this platform to help outreach to other trans athletes and LGBTQ people, that they don't care what the pushback is. Now, I think it's a calculated risk, right? But what I really appreciate is that the companies that I've worked with, specifically Bonobos and Nike, have have done this because it is part of their company culture, it's part of their values, and it's part of what they 
preach. And so they're really living their mission and their values by associating themselves with me. Um, and or and or however you frame it, by including me in their product, in their catalog, in their advertisements, and so on. So at no point do I ever feel like this is just me being used because of my identity to check a box. Part of the questions last night, someone asked a question that led me to the answer of talking about my first experience competing as male. My first experience competing as male was in Ironman Florida. It was my first Ironman race. And I remember running in the running section of that race thinking, this isn't hard. Like, I have already swam 2.4 miles, biked 112 miles, and I'm now in the middle of a marathon run to end the race. And I thought, this isn't hard. I volunteered to do this. This is voluntary. I signed up for this. Living my life every day as a trans person in this world is hard. Now, this was in the beginning of my transition. This was in 2010, 2011. I can't remember. <laughs> I really should research that. Um, this was in the, you know, the first two years. So I think that I was facing challenges that I certainly don't face today because of the way society is involved and because of the way and the point at which I'm in my transition. But at that time, that was what I was thinking. And when I crossed that finish line, I was prouder than I've ever been in terms of a sporting achievement. And the volunteer looked at me and said, congratulations, you are an iron woman. And I was so disappointed and hurt. And it was almost 12 hours of racing. And that was what I met when I crossed the line. And it was a moment of someone not seeing me the way that I saw myself. And this was my experience for many years, through my childhood, through my college years, and from the first time that I understood my gender identity as being something different than my peers. My biggest battle was that people didn't see me and acknowledge me the way that I saw myself. In that moment at that race, I, I remember being really disappointed. And after a couple of moments of allowing myself to be disappointed, I decided that I didn't want that to overshadow the amazing accomplishment that I had just achieved. I wanted to be an Ironman for a very long time. And I did it. And I didn't want that to ruin or inform the entire experience. Now, it obviously did in some ways because I use this story as an example in a lot of the times when I'm, when I'm talking because I think it is a great example of someone who wasn't intentionally trying to harm me, but the impact was very hurtful for me to not be seen how I, how I saw myself. The difference with what happened in the Facebook Live is that those comments are intended to be hurtful. When people intentionally misgender me, call me she, uh, question my ability to compete or perform without testosterone, uh, question the ability and the legitimacy of transgender women competing in sport, and essentially just go against everything that I say, that's intentional. Those folks are trying to hurt me, and they're trying to push buttons. And while I find it frustrating and annoying, I also know that arguing with them is not in my best interest because those folks don't want to come along. They don't want to come around. They have no interest in changing their opinion or their thought, and they're basically just doing it to push buttons. But I think it's important to acknowledge that that still happens, and that's why this is important. It's about inclusion, and it's about respect. So I'm really proud and honored to be that person uh, in, in the catalog and online, and to have them elevate my story. Um, I think that, well, I hear these comments, and of course they hurt a little bit, like slightly, just a little bit, <laughs> a little less than the Iron Man comment probably. Um, but what I want is, uh, you know, I made this choice. I made the choice to be out in public and visible. And so I know that that's a decision that I made. But I'm doing it because I know the importance of having out role models. I talked about it in the Olympic video, 
and I talked about it, I probably talked about it a hundred times, um, everything that I say, everything that I, every interview that I have comes back to the fact that visibility and my visibility can be a tool for social change. And that's the reason why I'm out and open about my identity, that it's so important for other people to see representations of themselves in the spaces that they want to be and the spaces that they know that they should occupy and, and navigate the world in, within. And so for any person to see a men's catalog, including trans men, it really sends the message of all men. We're here for all men. Trans men are men and they belong in men's spaces. And this is a great example of, of supporting that, of highlighting that, and also of just normalizing that, of saying, this doesn't have to be a big deal. We can include trans men the same way that we would include any other man in our catalog. And I really appreciate that. So I had the, the best time last night with Andy and the Bonobos folks. So. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, thank you to Brandy for grooming and to uh, Bright Young Things for the amazing videos that they put up as part of the promotion uh, and also to Parker Malloy for writing a great piece. I am so appreciative of the opportunity to be involved and it really means a lot to me um, and I hope it means something to the folks who are looking for representations of themselves in really amazing looking clothes. <laughs> just so incredibly blessed to have the opportunity to participate in all of this and um, and to do it while being my authentic self and when I know I know that when other people do what those very few people did on Facebook live that's not a problem at all with me and for a long time I thought that it was for a long time I thought I was doing something wrong for other people to not see me the way that I saw myself. But what I know now is that that's their problem. And so my advice for anybody who encounters people who are resistant to acknowledging them as the way that they know they are, the way they ask other people to acknowledge them, using pronouns, using names, uh, or accessing spaces that they know that they belong in, that's not a problem with you. It's not a problem with anything that you the way you dress, the way you wear your hair, if you wear makeup, or I have makeup on right now. <laughs> if you wear makeup or paint your nails or express yourself in any manner, it's not your problem. It's their problem that they can't acknowledge, accept, understand, or even allow space for you to exist in the world as you are. And so, uh, you know, it helps me to, first of all, never read the comments, <laughs> but then also to just keep in mind that it's not about, it's not my problem when folks are resistant to my identity, when they're uh, leaving comments like that online, pushing buttons. They're just trying to move me out of the space that I'm occupying, and uh, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so, all right, have a good one.